The pancreas is a kind of a unique organ. It's not very big, but it has some very important functions in the body. Namely, it controls insulin. And insulin is important because that maintains our blood sugar levels. In total, the pancreas plays a really important role in, um, in how we maintain our bodies. When we look at the pancreas in terms of transplantation, we're really focused on two specific areas. Uh, one is type 1 diabetes, which is juvenile diabetes, um, which is different from type 2 diabetes, which is more commonly known as adult onset diabetes. We've had a long-standing transplant center here, and this is a perfect marriage between the pancreas center and all of the resources that are very large and uh, uh, very well-performing transplant center uh, brings uh, to New York Presbyterian. People that come to the pancreas center, if they have type 1 diabetes, can be directed to us to get a full evaluation. They'll be evaluated by a large multidisciplinary team that brings uh, a, an array of experts uh, dealing with uh, type 1 diabetes. And the ultimate goal is to get people off insulin, stop the progression of all of these very devastating secondary complications of diabetes, such as the underlying heart disease, the kidney failure, the, all the vascular issues. And I think we're uniquely positioned to offer therapies for that. Um, the other area that transplantation can help with is known as chronic pancreatitis. There's a number of uh, diseases that can result in chronic pancreatitis. Some of the more common are hereditary in nature, like cystic fibrosis. Um, others are if people have high blood fat levels, uh, they can affect the pancreas in a negative way and create chronic pancreatitis. Uh, people who have taken certain medications uh, that they've reacted to in a bad way can affect the pancreas and produce chronic pancreatitis, as well as alcoholism can also uh, uh, create the same problem. And like type 1 diabetes, once a patient has chronic pancreatitis, it affects their ability to control their blood glucose levels and initiates that cascade of all those other devastating complications from what they would effectively have then as diabetes. Whole organ transplantation for type 1 diabetes is not new. We've been practicing it now since 1963. Um, but even though we've been practicing it for decades, there's only about 1,200 cases a year that are done, and only at very select centers that have uh, distinct expertise uh, with this. The reason for that is, is that um, it's not an easy operation. Uh, it takes uh, skill and experience. So. There's only a handful of centers nationally that practice this, and we are one of them. Um, uh, when we think about whole organ transplantation for type 1 diabetes, uh, we can think about it in a couple of different ways. Um, oftentimes, when type 1 diabetics come to transplant to see us, the um, the ravages of their diabetes has already affected some of their other organs, namely their kidneys. So they come for what's called a simultaneous kidney and pancreas transplant, and we can perform both of those at the same time. Other times when people's type 1 diabetes is so out of control that it's interfering with their daily life, uh, causing them to be admitted to the hospital for a lot of low blood sugar levels um, and interfering with their daily living and putting their life at risk, then we can offer them a pancreas transplant alone without the need for a kidney transplant. Um, both of those operations are highly successful um, with one year survival rates uh, approaching 90% and one year graft graph survival rates approaching 90%. Um, the new innovations that are coming in line for the treatment of type 1 diabetes is the introduction of islet cell therapy. Right now, islet cell therapy is an experimental uh, option. Um, it has not been adapted in a wide way because 
we just don't have the long-term experience with it and the long-term results don't match what we can do with whole organ pancreas. Islet transplantation is useful for people with chronic pancreatitis and it's useful for type 1 diabetics. Those are the two indications. When you look at chronic pancreatitis, the unique ability there is to use a person's own pancreas, remove a portion of it, and get those cells that are responsible for uh, maintaining the blood glucose levels and reinfuse it back into someone with a minimally invasive procedure. With type 1 diabetes, that's a more complicated procedure. It's that, that's a place, that's, a, that's an area where we can't use someone's own pancreas because that pancreas is already functioning very poorly and doesn't produce the insulin or they are resistant to the insulin that, um, that the person produces. So we have to get them a new pancreas. And that pancreas is obtained in the way that we obtain organs for standard transplantation of, say, a kidney or a liver. It's usually from a deceased donor. And now you're dealing with a very different area and you're dealing with true transplantation and all of the issues with immunosuppression that come into play. Um, but even though it's complex, it's been a life-saving tool to help people that have advanced to pretty devastating diabetes that is starting to affect the rest of their body and a successful pancreas transplantation, whether it's from a whole organ or an islet, is an effective cure for them. Uh, we are now starting to look at islet cell therapy as a way to really treat type 1 diabetes. And I think that in the next five years, there's a real potential that using islet cell therapy is going to be the standard of care. And the exciting thing about that is that it's going to save a patient a huge operation. Uh, and all the complications that come from a long operation and a long recovery because islet cell therapy can be performed with minimally invasive techniques. Um, and the patients get a small little catheter, get the islets infused, they're home in a couple of days, they're back to their life in a week. Um, it makes a big difference. Um, islet cell therapy at our center uh, is performed. Uh, it is an option. Uh, we are, in fact, the only center in the New York region that has had three successful human islet cell transplants for type 1 diabetes. Um, it's a rare accomplishment, which we're happy about.